Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than the Blade movie started the path to the MCU. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. As you can imagine, we get a ton of requests for History Of episodes, and some of the most popular requests recently have been Teen Titans, Hellboy, Red Hood, and of course, Blade. We'll get to all of them in due time, but today is all about the Daywalker Blade. I don't know about you guys, but his appearance in Spider-Man the Animated Series from the 90s is what first introduced me to the character. And then years later, we got the awesome Wesley Snipes Blade trilogy. It was that film trilogy that really made him a well-known character. But even now, not everyone knows about Blade's comic book roots. And that, my friends, is why we're here. Blade first hit the pages of a comic in the Tomb of Dracula issue 10 in 1973, and was created by writer Marv Wolfman and artist Gene Collin. As you can see, Blade looks very different today compared to his first appearance in comics. He originally sported a green leather jacket with yellow shades, an afro, and of course, stakes around his chest to kill vampires. But like most comic book characters, he's changed drastically over the years to reflect the modern times. Like I mentioned before, my introduction to Blade was from the 90s Spider-Man cartoon. He just looked so cool to me as a kid. I mean, he had a sword, rode a Harley, and hunted down vampires. Vampires, most notably being the vampire named Morbius. But if that's not a delicious pot of awesome, I don't know what is. He also had a bunch of additional weapons and tech to take down the vampires. On a side note, I remember having the Marvel Legends Wesley Snipes Blade action figure. Man, I wish I still had it. Anyway, enough rambling about my childhood. Let's talk about his comic book origin. Blade, whose real name is Eric Brooks, was born in a Soho brothel in Great Britain on October 24th in 1929 to be exact. That's right, even in the comics, Blade is over 70 years old. The reason he looks so much younger is because of his vampire powers. Anyway, Blade's birth is very important to his origin. His mother, Tara Brooks, was a prostitute at Madame Vanity's brothel. And when she started to go into labor, the doctor that tended to her was a vampire named Deacon Frost, a one-of-a-kind vampire with the ability to control his victims. And as jacked up as it is, Frost feasted on Blade's mom during labor. Yeah, he was sucking blood from her neck while the poor woman was pushing out her baby. That's all kinds of messed up. Anyway, as we all know, babies are still attached and feeding off their mother until the umbilical cord is cut, and Frost accidentally passed on certain enzymes in his own blood to the infant, turning Blade into a Dompier. Now you may be asking, what the heck is a Dompier? Well, it's the result of a vampire having a kid with a normal human. This gave Blade several superhuman abilities, like being able to smell supernatural creatures, prolong lifespan, and immunity to being turned. But it also gave Blade sensitivity to bright light. Going back to Blade's birth, after Frost killed Blade's mother, he was about to kill the baby as well but he was driven off by his mother's co-workers. They would then raise him until he was nine years old, and during this time, Blade became an expert with knives and daggers. Then one day, walking home from school, Eric saw an old man being attacked by three guys, so he figured he'd help him, but there was one problem. He realized they weren't men at all. They were vampires, which scared him, but he soon found out the old man was able to hold his own and defeat them with the silver sword he had built into his cane. Once the man defeated the vampire attackers, he introduced himself as Jamal Afari, a jazz trumpet player who also just so happened to be a vampire hunter. Afari soon moved into Madame Vanity's brothel and taught Eric everything he knew about the horn and the undead. He basically became a father to Blade. Sometime later, after Afari had gone missing for a week, Blade went to check on him, only to discover that he had been bitten and turned into a vampire. At which point, Afari started attacking him, saying, I thirst for your blood, human. Blade tried and failed to talk some sense into Afari, and was forced to kill his father figure. The story then cuts to Blade telling the story to a lady, where he says, He was the only father I'd ever had, lady, and I'd killed him, but Dracula had killed him first. Just like that bearded vamp had killed my mum. And that night, I swore to get them both, no matter how long it took, no matter what it cost. And boom, just like that, Blade the Vampire Killer was born. So we've established that Blade badly wanted revenge against Dracula and Deacon Frost. Well, it didn't take long for him to get it. As I mentioned, his first appearance was in Tomb of Dracula issue 10. But by issue 13 of the series, he finds Dracula and kills him, getting his first taste of revenge. However, Dracula would return by the end of issue 14, which isn't that surprising, I guess, because I'm really not sure how you could have a Tomb of Dracula series without Dracula. Uh, now, eventually, you do plan to have dinosaurs on your, on your dinosaur tour, right? Hello? Either way, that was only half of Blade's mission anyway, as he also vowed to kill Deacon Frost for killing his mother, arguably the more important kill for Blade. His revenge against Deacon came in issue 53 of the same series, with the help of private investigator turned vampire Hannibal King. Together they tracked down Frost to his cavern, where Blade then threw stakes into his chest, launching Deacon Frost into a machine and sending sparks flying everywhere. Blade and Hannibal King then escape just before the place goes boom, 
and bye-bye Deacon Frost. After the Tomb of Dracula series, Blade went on to fight famous Spider-Man villain, the living vampire Morbius. They first met in Adventure Into Fear issue 24 in 1974, during which they battled for a good portion of the issue. But in the end, Morbius managed to get away. In another issue, Blade teamed up with Spider-Man to catch Morbius. Long story short, Morbius bit Blade, and Blade's blood enzymes reacted unexpectedly to Morbius' unique form of vampirism. This unexpected reaction granted Blade all the strengths of a vampire while eliminating all of their weaknesses, such as garlic, crosses, and sensitivity to sunlight an ability that soon gave him the nickname Daywalker. Blade would appear in many different comics and series over the years, including Marvel Preview Issue 3, where we got his origin, and a six-page backup story in Marvel Preview Issue 8 in 1976. Throughout the 1980s, Blade wasn't much of a prominent character, but in 1990, beginning with Ghost Rider Issue 28, he co-starred in the Night Stalker series and got a brand new look, which also happens to be the look the 90s Spider-Man cartoon pulled its inspiration from. Anyway, Night Stalkers only lasted 18 issues, with Blade then moving on to his own series called Blade the Vampire Hunter. But this series had a short lifespan as well, and ended only after 10 issues. Blade then landed a 6 issue miniseries called Blade Blood Allies. However, in more recent years, Blade played a small part in Civil War, where he was hunted by police for killing vampires. Something they mistook for homicides. He was also involved in a plan to bring down Wolverine during this series. Even more recently, Blade joined the Mighty Avengers under Clint Barton's old Ronin persona in order to hide his identity. However, he's eventually exposed by the Deathwalkers he was trying to hide from in the first place. The Avengers ultimately help him take down the Deathwalkers, after which he leaves the team. Lastly, Blade was seen in last year's Secret Empire story where he kills a crap ton of vampires to protect humans. And I hope they continue to find bigger ways to incorporate him into stories, because he's freaking awesome. Now how about some powers and abilities? Blade is of course half human, half vampire. And after being bit by Morbius, he has all their abilities and none of their weaknesses, effectively making him the perfect vampire and best vampire slayer. With that said, Blade does still have a thirst for blood, but he's a good guy, so instead of biting people's necks, he injects himself with a special serum that provides the same nourishment. Like most superpowered beings, Blade has super strength, speed, agility, endurance, and senses. He also has fantastic vision and hearing, both better than even a normal vampire, but let's just run down some of Blade's abilities, shall we? He's not necessarily immortal, but he ages much, much slower than a normal human. He also possesses a degree of invulnerability and resistance to psychic and physical attacks. He also has an amazing healing factor. After being bit by Morbius, he's able to regenerate missing limbs and organs. Again, his healing factor is insane. He has a danger sense which allows him to sense supernatural activity. So if there's a demon or demonic presence in the room, Blade knows. He can hypnotize his opponents and influence them to do his bidding. He's incredibly intelligent in the area of supernatural phenomenon. And of course, he's a master martial artist and is proficient with almost every melee weapon on Earth. Not to mention, he's a highly skilled marksman with firearms. Lastly, Blade is incredibly strong and is able to lift up to 10 tons. He can even jump hundreds of feet through the air like he's the Hulk or something. He has several other powers and abilities, but overall, Blade is no joke. If you want to read some Blade comics, here are some recommendations. Read Blade Undead by Daylight, Blade Black and White Trade Paperback, Blade Undead Again, and the Night Stalker series. That should be enough to get you guys started. First up for Wednesday, February 21st, we have Damage Issue 2. Damage can smash his way through a war zone, but can he smash his way through the Suicide Squad? Next, we have Batman Sins of the Father Issue 1. This comic is based on the acclaimed video game series from Telltale Games. This new digital first comic tells the story of the events between the first and second seasons. Now we have Doctor Strange Domination Issue 1. When Doctor Strange raises Las Vegas from its destruction during Secret Empire, he inadvertently opens a big door for the embodiment of evil, Mephisto. Here we have Birthright Issue 30. If you love fantasy and fairy tale type stories, this comic is definitely for you. And finally, we have Black Panther Annual Issue 1. Three legendary Black Panther writers return to Wakanda. Don McGregor's famous storyline, The Panther's Rage, has become one of the most well-respected runs in comic book history. Now the author who redefined Wakanda for a generation is back to expand the mythos. And that's going to bring another episode of Variant to a close. But remember to head over to VariantComics.com to keep up with the show and all things comic related. And if you liked today's episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button and then the bell next to it so you're notified whenever we upload a new video. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics. <laughs>